Right, it's back in its home now, um, and I've now got to uh, re-level the bed. I'm using Skynet, um, so uh, obviously as I've moved it, I need to make sure that everything is now level and where it should be. So the first thing, if I can find my ruler, which I can't, it's sitting right in front of me. First thing to do is to check the heights of, let's just zoom out a little bit there, of these. And they have to be exactly the same. So put a ruler in. What I do is I tend to just line it up at 20 centimeters. So you put the ruler down the bottom. Onto something flat. And make sure that they are sitting exactly the same height of these two points here. Next thing, I'm now going to go through the auto level procedure with Skynet. Now I'm using Cura and I've got it connected via the USB, so I'm doing uh, all the commands via the USB, uh, which is uh, off screen at the moment. So the first thing is an M851Z0, then an M500, and then G28. Now before you level the bed, you need to have made sure that you've had the heater, uh, sort of the hot end and the hot bed running for at least five minutes. So I've now done a G2, there's now a G1 and uh, X110, Y110, just to bring it to the middle. Then our all important piece of paper, and we just lower the uh, head down now I have found with leavening the bed that it's a bit of a it's a bit of a black art you kind of after trial and error you kind of get to know what sort of drag you need and I actually find you you need more drag than you actually think you do well, that's me now leveled and it's a G 92 Z0 a G 30 X 110 Y 110 And this is then going to spit out the uh, the offset that I need to put in, which in this particular case is 1.53. So it's M851 Z minus 1.53, and then M500. And uh, our also leveling is now done. So the next test that we're going to do is to make sure our auto shut off works. Uh, so the bed is just heating up. Now I've got my uh, auto leveling set to uh, a grid of five by five, which means it does 20 points. So it's going to go through its whole auto leveling process. I'm probably going to speed this part of the video up.
Okay, it's finished its uh, auto leveling process. I've got some G-code at the beginning which uh, basically extrudes a line. It just helps uh, to prime the hot end. Also gets rid of any gunk that happens to be sitting on the end. Now just going to draw a, a quick test square. And the head's been deliberately set slowly, moves across, hits the micro switch, and that's it. The whole thing has now been shut down. And obviously, when I get back, all I need to do is move the head across slightly, hit me reset switch, and she comes back into life again. As I said uh, in this video, at the end of it, I was going to talk about. Um, crimping and how to crimp properly. Uh, the first thing is a lot of people think that different colour crimps are to do with when you're cabling up something that you're supposed to use different colours to represent you know live neutrals, positive negatives. That is incorrect. Uh, the different size crimps or the different colour crimps are different sizes of cable. Let me see if I can get this camera to focus on that. There we go. If you can see, they are different sizes. And obviously you need to know the size of the cable you're using to use the correct crimp. So we're going to just take a bit of cable here. You need some decent wire cutters or strippers. I've got these here. And you just strip the end off. Now I happen to know that I need to use blue for this. You slide it on. Now, you'll note That the wire is coming out the end now that's incorrect which means that this bit is too long you kind of get to judge it over a period of time how much you should have but this camera really does not want to play focus in today does it there we go what you're aiming for is that you can just see the copper coming out the end there. Now as I said, I've got a crimp tool which is a ratchet one. And you can see it's got red, blue and yellow spots. And the idea is, if you put your crimp in there, Trying to do this on camera is not easy. Make sure your wire is all the way in. Your crimp's there. And squeeze. This now gives you a proper uniformed crimp, which is very strong. Some people We'll get a crimp. We'll stuff it in the end so it's hanging out. And we'll get a pair of pliers or cutters and just crush it. That is incorrect. I mean, obviously. I deliberately made sure that there was loads of wires hanging out the end, but that, that's wrong. You've crushed it, you haven't put a nice uniformed see this one here, nice uniform, and that one has just been crushed to hell. If you're gonna be using crimps, 
get yourself a decent set of uh, a, a crimping tools. As I say, this is a ratchet one. As I say, you can see you've got your red, blue and yellow spots. And the idea is, is when you start crimping, this will ratchet all the way through. And at the very last point, it will then release the handle. So if I show you further out, see I can hold it there and that's now going to hold, I'm not doing anything to that. That's the, that last little squeeze and it releases. That means the jaws here are designed to give the correct amount of pressure on the end of the crimp. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, soldering. I'm going to have to pause the video for a minute because I uh, just need to plug in and heat up the soldering iron. Okay, so we're now going to talk about uh, soldering. Um, soldering really isn't that complicated. You've just got to take note of what you're doing. Firstly, we've just got a couple of wires here. Now, I've sort of picked up um, a stereo jack because it's quite a chunky thing to, to solder. Um, uh, and I picked it up deliberately because it, it will enable me to demonstrate, um, as I've talked about earlier in the video about soldering the wires onto the hotbed, um, you needed a decent soldering iron. Now, I've currently got my soldering iron, I don't know if we can get that into shot. Not really. Um, that's currently set at 290 degrees. The art of soldering is preparing both sides. So firstly, I'm just going to strip a bit of wire off the end of these cables. It's going to be a little twist in them just so they stay together. Now this is what they call tinning. This is preparing the cable to go onto whatever it is that you're going to be soldering. So tinning is take the solder and line, put a little bit on the end just to uh, get it to flow. you should find that you end up with a nice flow of solder that goes through all the copper and all the way around it so if I can get this to focus there we go so as I rotate them round, you can see that solder has gone all the way round the copper cable. And is now got solder flowing all the way through it, ready to be connected to whatever it is you want. Now I happen to know I've left these a little bit longer than they need to be, so I'm just going to chop the edge off a little bit. It's also that you need to prepare what you're going on to. So in this particular case I'm going to blow some solder around those connectors and what I've managed to do is just put a little pool in there that has covered up the holes. The next thing, is you want to put your cable where you want it.
you flow the solder so you get a nice pool of solder all around the cable. What you've ended up with, not the neatest job in the world I have to admit, but you'll see that there is solder both sides and all round the cable. The yellowing, don't worry about that, that's just the flux which is the thing that helps it stick. Now I'm aware that that was not the best positioning. It's uh, slightly hanging off the end there, but uh, the principle is what you're trying to do is you need to prepare both ends ready for soldering. So when doing the hot bed, if you are gonna be using uh, uh, some XT connectors, which are these things, already got some solder in the end there. You prepare the end so I'll just get these prepared so I can show you. This one really doesn't want to uh, play ball. There we go. Right, so if I show you one that's not been done. So that's the end as they are. And that has now had solder just flowed onto the end. This side's got a little bit too much. So it means when you go to put your cable in, you can, you've got solder on the cable, you've got solder on the end, when you put the two together and heat it, everything flows and joins together. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information on how to terminate your connectors uh, correctly and to obviously make good solid joins and uh, termination. Thanks so much for watching.